Hey, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Doing good. Uh, uh, push in on the big part and then pull out when the... There you go. Ah, looks like you've probably been in a Tesla before then. Oh, yeah. Yeah, wow, nice. All right. Tesla picked me up from the airport. Awesome. They're nice. Like yes, sir. I love them. Oh, man. Have you ever experienced full self-driving? No. Well, that's all we're about to do. So, we should get to your destination completely Please use your seat belt based your on uh, Tesla full self-driving artificial intelligence. Um, this is pretty cool. I've never seen that. Oh, well, I love it. I love that you're getting a chance to see it. Let me, by the way, let me know if the air is too low, too high. I've got, I set it pretty low right now, but if it gets cold, let me know. I can turn it up very quickly. So yeah, it does everything, Tom. It's so it's coming. <laughs> it's got vision and it's got GPS data. So you can see the vision right here. You, well, it's a little bit tougher. Like when there's other vehicles around, it'll see other vehicles, people, bicycles, wow. everything, school buses. So it definitely um, has a you know it's it's got eight cameras. So it's taking in all the photons, all just like our eyeballs do. Huh. Um, and then, similar to us, the the software that those photons go into, the NVIDIA inference chip, it's been trained up similar to the way our human brain developed. But it's been trained up specifically just for driving. Wow. So it is a neural net that has been fed millions and billions of clips of good drivers just huh. doing all sorts of different scenarios <laughs> and so it's like reinforced machine learning yeah and so it's taken a while we're about what do you think probably about four or five years in to the development but it's gotten really really good and now that being said obviously i'm still in the driver's seat as a supervisor there's a camera looking at me like a hawk uh, because even though the technology has gotten really really good it yeah. can make a mistake from time to time. Nothing that's critical, but more like navigational. Sometimes the either the GPS data or the Google map data can be a little wrong. Yeah. And so in order to avoid going in circles, you know, the Big Ben <laughs> type of thing, uh, uh, National Lampoon's vacation, just going around in circles for a while, that I can help out with that. But I've yet to... You know, there's no like what I would what they call critical interventions where no, if I don't take over, we're gonna wreck. Yeah. That that. But from a regulatory standpoint and just where we are in the life cycle of the technology, um, Tesla still requires a driver to be as well as do the regulators. Obviously, we're not. Huh. Yeah. You know, only in certain. Uh, Certain defined areas have the regulator signed off on there not being a driver in the drivers. Obviously, Waymo. I don't know if you've heard of Waymo. But yeah, I've heard of Waymo. Yeah, they're in about four or five cities, and Tesla is about to launch their driverless rideshare in in Austin. They're starting out in Austin, and that's in less than a month. Huh. Yeah. They they have it in some California cities, don't they? They do. It's just for employees. So you're talking about Tesla specifically? Yeah. Yeah, so Tesla is doing ride share, but it's at this point, it's only internal. This is, okay, this is my understanding. I, But it's, it's internal for Tesla employees in Fremont, California, and a couple other places. But as far as like giving public rides, that will start in June. So Waymo has been giving pub, you know, they actually give rides to the public. Like you can download the Waymo app. Um, I think you got to get on a waiting list. So it's not like Uber where you could just download an Uber app, set up an account and get an Uber driver in five minutes. Right. Um, you have to be in those cities. It has to be in just that geo fenced area. And you got to be on a waiting list to even get on. And, and it could take you half an hour uh, mm. to get her. So it's still, it's still in the nascent phase there. Um, Tesla's again; they're 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 going to start with their driverless to the public in June in Austin, and 
obviously we we are pretty sure that once they're able to get it launched in Austin and scaled up just a bit, not uh -huh. not to scale up too much, it's highly likely going to come to Houston and Dallas next. Wow. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's going to be Texas first, right? I mean, Texas is the home of Tesla. Yeah. It's the home of basically all of Elon's companies now. He's, you know, good friends with the governor. Um, you know, so the, 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 <laughs> it's all set up the, that it, this is going to happen, right? It's going to come to Houston and Dallas. Um, so, you know, it's it's just a question of when and how many, right? But yeah, you can see right now. I haven't done a thing since we got since I picked you up. What do you think so far? Amazing. Yeah, and there we go. There we're gonna run it. We are not. So that's the other thing that is really neat about the full self drive is because it's software, Tom. It doesn't have an ego. It doesn't have emotions. It doesn't get drunk. It just follows the rules. Follows the rules. It, it unless it it needs to not follow the rules to be safe there are scenarios and you know this you know you you you've you know we've both been driving for quite a while we could probably think of a handful of scenarios where you need to technically break the law in order to be safe yeah. like if a car was coming right at us yeah you got to go you're going to go you might get up on the curb right you might fly over that you know so um but it does have, it, you know, the algorithm is much quicker than our brain, and it does makes decisions without emotion. And you know, generally speaking, emotion can be deadly, yeah. and ego can be dead. So it doesn't have an ego, doesn't have emotion, uh, doesn't have a girlfriend or a wife. Just does what it's supposed. Just to does do. what it's supposed to do. Doesn't doesn't go get drunk. Doesn't need a break after twelve hours. It it's just repeatable and in a environment where we lose 45,000 of our loved ones every year on the road yeah. you know I, I I'd like to you know sometimes you throw out big numbers like that and it just go you know it doesn't mean you know you get into big numbers and it doesn't mean anything to people and the way I found that it's the most powerful is we lost 44,000 Americans in the Vietnam War from yeah. 1963 until we pulled out in 1975. So over a 12 year period, one of the most, I was young at the time, so I don't remember, but, but I can recall in what I've learned in school, it was one of the most horrific decades in our country's existence, right? Yeah. It tore us apart culturally. It changed the culture of our country. Yeah. And it was 44,000. We lose that every year on the roads. In car wreck. In car wreck. But yet, we're, a, we're, we're like, it's, it's interesting. 44,000 deaths over a 12 year period changed the culture of our country. Yet we do that every year on our roads and we just accept it. It's interesting. It's like, it's human psychology. It's like we, we some deaths are worth more than others, I guess. It's, I, yeah, yeah. maybe that's the wrong way to put it. Yeah. But, um, yeah. But interestingly, we still get pushback to the technology More interesting is turning here oh is this not the what so what i will tell you is it is based on yeah so what it's probably doing is there's probably a pretty big backup there at westlake houston parkway and kingwood drive it and what time knows, is yeah yeah it just knows to go this so way. it has fleet telemetry and uh sort of like ways and it, it's a combination of all those so it it actually yeah, I was curious what gps system does it use so it is it's based on it sits on top of google maps so it's it's tesla's own navigation system but it has a baseline of google maps but pretty much everything sit on top sits on top of google maps right uh, but then tesla has their own you know artificial intelligence that goes on top of that that chooses that, that knows the traffic data out there like basically similar to Waze in that it, it knows the traffic data, it knows most of the issues that are out there that we just aren't going to know, yeah. right? Because I can't see down to the 
intersection of Westlake Houston and Kingwood Drive. Yeah. Uh, I just know that's usually how I go, so I'm just going to keep going that way. This is set up to where it will, first of all, so I said it, it just, it knows all of it. It knows all the traffic patterns going on as we speak all around here. Huh. Now, it gives me the, I, I, I have the ability <laughs> to then go into the user interface and I'll show you in navigation. I can program it to like, say like, no, you know what? I go the same way every day. I don't really care. I just want to go that way. Yeah. Or I can say, find the optimal route based on traffic conditions and I can set it up to do save me 10 to, like if I said save 10 minutes if if it saves me five minutes it's just going to keep going the way I usually go yeah. I have it set up to save me so if if it has a route that will save me 61 seconds or more it's going to reroute wow. and that's basically what it did then so it's going through the neighborhood here because when it Calculate when that algorithm calculated all the different ways to get to your point of destination. This way was at least 61 seconds faster wow. than the other way. Now, I we'll never know why. We'll never, well, you and I will never even know if it's true because we're, we're never going to be at the intersection of Westlake Houston Parkway and Kingwood Drive right now, <laughs> right? But, um, this does. Oh, it definitely was quicker. Yeah. I missed that intersection. What amazed me was when we were at that uh, red light and it knew when to turn right. Yes. Yes. It it will. So it, it also is, it knows the geography and jurisdiction it's in. So in Texas, we are allowed to turn right on red. Yeah. But in some states, you're not. Yes. And what we've seen and again i'm in texas and i generally unless i go on the road for a road trip i generally only drive in texas so that's all i know it so what it what i've seen it do is it gets up to a red light if it's first it will sneak up it has but it does have to come to a complete and total stop which is what you're supposed to do legally most people don't most people roll yeah right but you're legally supposed to stop so it does that and then it takes a peek and if there's nobody coming, it'll take a right turn. The other thing that I didn't even know until I started using Tesla FSD is that in the state of Texas, if you're on a one way and the other intersecting road is a one way, you can turn left on red. I didn't even know that huh. until, because I guess it was about four or five months ago, I was downtown and you know, there's a bunch of one ways yeah. in downtown. I was downtown. And all of a sudden, it's turned left on red, and I stopped it. And I re I reported it to Tesla. Uh, I was like, I think this is an error. And l later that day, when I got home, I went online and I looked it up. Sure enough, in the state of Texas, if you are on a one way, and your intersecting road is also a one way, you can turn left on red. Huh? Yeah. So I was wrong. <laughs> the system was right and I was wrong. And I've found myself doing that as well, where I, there's been a handful of times, in fact, I'd say 50% of the time, when I do take over for navigational reasons or something like that, yeah. where I think it's doing something wrong, i found that ha half or maybe more of the time it was me that was wrong. So I always go back and like, I think that was wrong. I'm going to stop it just to be safe. But then when I go home and go online and check and I'm like sure enough it was right i just didn't under, i just didn't know that i didn't know our traffic rules to that level of nuance right because there's not many scenarios where you're on a one way with an intersecting one way right and you're turning left i mean obviously that happens it's just not as often yeah like in fact i don't think we have any scenarios like that here in kingwood or this area no. In fact, I think the only place I've encountered that is downtown. Yeah, because all the one ways. All the one ways, yeah. Wow, amazing. Yeah, so it is. Uh, you're liking it so far? I might have to get one. Yeah, I'm telling. And the the great thing about this too is uh, the pricing of Teslas has definitely come down quite a bit. I, it's amazing how many people still get. Uh, ever since I started doing Uber, I retired about six months ago, 
and I decided to go ahead and start doing Uber about a month ago, um, just to you know do something, have, be useful <laughs> in yeah. my retirement. Yeah. I I love my Tesla, and so I, you know I know that Houston is a is a city where um, you know it's it's taking a little bit longer for Tesla to take off. It's just not a yeah, you know, just historically we're not an EV type of not like California they call California Tesla Fornia right because there's so many of them but here and Austin has quite a few but here in Houston a lot of times when I'm getting riders I'm giving them their first opportunity to even be in a Tesla and at like at yourself I'm giving the first time I've seen this yeah and most I would say I can't think of anybody I've had in my Tesla yet and I've had I've had over 300 rides where they had seen FSD before and this was their second third or fourth time so it's almost always the first experience so that's kind of why I'm one of the reasons I like getting the hound out here and uh, and uh, and do an uber like this to show everybody what's coming down the pike it is pretty cool yeah but yeah Tesla's are uh, this Tesla right here this is a model 3 long range this one the sticker, if you go on the Tesla website, it's in the low 40s, but um, yeah, it's come way down. Um, I, and I was going to talk about the federal tax incentive, but judging by the neighborhood I'm driving you into, that's going to be irrelevant for you. <laughs> but if for those who do, um, you know, qualify for it, you know, and it, generally speaking, that's like, I, I, don't hold me to this, individuals who you know, have AGI less. Uh, you obviously don't qualify. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> but none, so take, I can not talk about that anymore. But yeah, the, what I would say to somebody like you, Tom, um, just get one to, to have as a second or third. Look at that. Did it, did it drop you off at the correct house? Yeah, absolutely. Do you want me to take you up into your driveway? No. Um, I'm good. But for a lot of folks, I just I just tell them like, you know, get get a Model Three, and you know, uh, just have it as a second or third driver, like a weekend driver, just to try it out. And oh yeah, it's uh, it's so cool. It's worth getting. One. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, it's been great talking to you. Yes, thank well, you. Yes, sir. Thank you. You've been very informative. Absolutely. And, and, and push out at the same time. Yes, sir. There we go. All right. It was great right. talking to you. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. You have a wonderful evening. You too. Have a good day. You too, bud.